All right, this one is called This Isekai Changes Everything from Mr. Velcro. Let's see what he has to say. Is there really an Isekai that's going to change everything? I am an Isekai connoisseur. Tell me about it. In every form of media, there are those that are considered to be the best of the best or the best over a certain period of time. It's funny that he leads in with Tensura because, listen, I love Tensura. Tensura is great. I think it's still one of the greatest Isekais that I've ever seen, but like... Season 3 right now, it's not a good look, you know? <laughs> right now, I think Tensor is, is at its lowest point in terms of audience satisfaction in, tr in just like the anime people. Best, or the best over a certain period of time. For anime, it's the big three, and for manga, we- Mmm, let's see. If the big three of the shonen were One Piece, Bleach, Naruto, the shit that I watched growing up, and the big three of Isekai right now, and it's funny, and Overlord probably should be in the list, but I haven't seen it, so I can't make a judgment on it. But right now, I thought the greats were like Mushoku Tensei, reincarnated as a slime, right? I think those two are safely top picks. I don't care how you feel about the anime and the seasons and being a little slow. I think that those two are really great. Konosuba was definitely up there as well. It's just a completely different type of isekai, taking it very, you know, it's, like, it's more comedy focused. And then we just started watching ReZero, and I'm only seven episodes in, but I can already tell... ReZero will probably be number one. It is actually mind-blowing how much of an impact ReZero has had on me throughout all the episodes. Usually, it takes a while for me to really get on board with something. And it's not to say Tensei Mushoku Tensei stalled too long and didn't capture my attention, but not in the same way that ReZero did. So I think it's ReZero and Mushoku Tensei Tensei for me. And I'm not sure what the order is, but probably ReZero number one, but it's also not fair because we're comparing full seasons versus like seven episodes worth of content. But I think that if I can already have that vibe at seven episodes in, that is already telling how good this show potentially could be after I finish season one and season two and onwards. Manga, we've got the dark trio, but the, <laughs> the dark trio, Chainsaw Man, Jujutsu Kaisen, and this is Tokyo Ghoul. I guess this is supposed to be like the the Sane and Big Three. But the series we'll be talking about today isn't any of these two. Okay. And just like the previous two I stated, it's known to be one of the best out there. One I'm of the best. I'm talking about the manhwa, the beginning after the end. Manhwa? Korean? Webtoon? Hold the fuck up? Wait a minute, do we have another... Oh, that was Hell's Paradise before? My bad if I said Tokyo Ghoul. Wait, shouldn't Tokyo Ghoul should be ahead of Hell's Paradise and Seinen? Anyways. Uh, any, anytime new webtoons get hyped up, I'm always so down, bro. Because, like, solo leveling, omniscient reader's viewpoint. Now you're telling me beginning after the end? Give it to me. For those of you who don't know what manhwa is, it's basically the Korean version of manga. Pretty much. With the main differences being the colors and the layout. Vertical of scrolling. Forms. But Tibet is also among what is considered to be the best of the best manhwas. Yo, he playing fucking Kevin Penkin's Shield Hero soundtrack right now. I think this is called Rising or something. Dawn. This is one of the best soundtracks ever. The violins are about to fucking hit. With the other two being Solo Leveling, which recently got its anime this part. adaptation. And Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint, which is its own masterpiece. Yeah. But Tibet is something that has especially fascinated. Sorry, I'm too distracted by the fucking violin right now in the background. This part is just so fucking good. Solo leveling, which recently got its anime adaptation, and Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint, ORV, which is let's its go. own masterpiece. But Tibet is something that has especially fascinated me. It's done things and has a lot of aspects that I've never seen before. Okay. But enough of me rambling, let's talk about what the story is about and who our main character Arthur is. I swear to God, if this motherfucker included Kevin Pinkin's soundtrack without realizing that this shit could get copyright claims, clearly the video is public, but if this video gets demonetized, and ugh, surely that's not gonna happen. Before Arthur was Arthur, he was an orphan who eventually grew up to be the king of a nation. Okay. And not just majestic ruler, but also a powerful defender of his country. He was So, main character is Arthur, and we're already starting in like this kind of medieval setting? Looked up to as being the strongest and the most respected in his kingdom. This However, is Overlord. with great power comes great loneliness. With no one to stand as his equal in either strength or position, Grey started to feel a certain emptiness. With him being an orphan, this wasn't the first time he's felt this feeling, but it still left a void within him. He wanted a reason or a chance to fight for himself, okay. rather than his kingdom. Someone he could call an equal, or at least someone he could look up to. And Basically, super OP character 
And he's saying already, I wish to def experience and defeat because he's too strong and now he's looking for like a new challenge. With his rebirth, or should I say transfer, his wish was finally transfer. granted. He was now reborn in this new world with the name Arthur. He's the- Got it, got it, got it. So, the isekai world is the medieval world where he's Arthur, but before that he's like grey or something, I'm not sure, but okay. Son of two retired adventurers who love him more than he could possibly know. Hey, not to mention, tense, he ends up being a magical genius. From what we can see, he's no longer alone and has wonderful parents and even a sister on the way. He this shit just Mushoku Tensei, it's not, but it's it's got a lot of those themes. He's living his life peacefully and couldn't really have much Bald. to worry about. Now it should be safe to say that King Grey is no more. This is where the peaceful life of Arthur Leowin begins. Or at- So, hold up. It was Grey in the beginning, sorry. I couldn't really tell because he didn't really explain to me like what this was, but he said Grey and Arthur interchangeably. So Grey is the person that was before King Grey in the same world, and then dead, and then Arthur now is what's going on. At least that's how it was supposed to be. Now, there is a certain point in the series that takes Arthur on a path that he was destined to take, ever since he ended up coming to this world. For those of you who have read it, you probably know what I mean, and for those who haven't, all I can tell you is look out for a cave and a dragon. But after- Look out for a cave and a dragon. So basically, there's gonna be some sort of dragon familiar, right? This is the moment where everything changes. Dragon. But after this turning point, life for Arthur is a painful journey. One of constant loss and him fighting for the things that he cares about the most. And even then, Arthur keeps on losing and losing and losing even more. And the lines between okay. Arthur Leowin and King Grey start to blur. Which brings me to another thing that I love about this character. Most times when watching an Izukai, the characters themselves can go through either two things. One, they change as a character completely leaving behind their old appearance and personality. Or yep. seeming like a completely different person. Yeah, Rimuru doesn't really at all refer back to his old life like Rudy does. I'm not, you don't have to, right? But like, it is interesting to see some isekais that completely just like establishes this like uh, uh, other world or thing and you're like you used to be a salary man before, then you're isekai, then you just never remember that shit ever again. Like, wise man grandchild was another example of that. Mushoku Tensei is different because the whole storytelling is to relate back to the failures of Rudy IRL and then refer back to that and overcome his trauma and problems in, you know, as Rudy, right? Tensor Arimuru? Has he ever? No. Well, you could, I guess you could explain like, because he's taken Shizu in and his mentality is all changed and blah blah blah, but okay, so in this show right now, Grey and Arthur is like separating due to all the shitty things happening after finding the dragon. ...like a completely different person than what they were before with very little of their previous self remaining. Or two, which is the complete opposite where the character is basically the same, with probably only... Right, Kazuma is pretty much the same, right? He doesn't really change. He has his identity from, you know, Earth and he brings it here and he just hangs out. Only their goal changing or a couple minor changes. In the beginning of the series, it seemed like Arthur would have been the former, with the way things were going. But as the series went on, the line between who he was before and who he is now started to blur. Arthur is supposed to have a peaceful life, one where he has a chance to do what he wants. <laughs> is that Russian? The letters. Because I'm just looking at the webtoon panel, but it's not English, you know, <laughs> bubbles. Instead of what he feels like he has an obligation to do. One where he could spend time with his loving family and not be as lonely as he was in his previous life. But now it seems like what Arthur thought would be the life of his dreams turns out to be his second nightmare. We hmm. see more and more of King Grey as the series goes on until eventually Arthur himself rids himself of the name Arthur altogether and fully embraces his identity as as King Grey. As Grey. So like again, the, the intro to the video was a I I, I don't know I I, I would have loved him for him to explain like okay in the beginning there was King Grey and then this guy like transferred or some shit and became Arthur but now after meeting the dragon looks like past life persona of Grey is taking over Arthur and he, he looks way, he looks definitely like a some sort of ruined king, right? This does not look heroic at all. 
character altogether and fully embraces his identity as Grey. But it's not as if Arthur isn't there. He still feels like Arthur, but at the same time, he doesn't. Almost as if there are two existing souls in one body. And you okay. could say that's because he lived two different lives, but this isn't the first time we've seen a character with two different lives. But it is the first time I felt like both their lives matter as much as they do in Tibet. It's an interesting concept that I actually like and still look forward to. But as with every anime and manga, an MC isn't enough to carry it all. Support. Well, not unless you're Kumako, of course. <laughs> well, hot take. I genuinely enjoy the human side more than Kumo perspective and fighting random CGI monsters. Straight up. Listen, Kumo wasn't bad at all. I loved her. I loved her, her never, you know, ending uh, spirit to continually fight and, you know, struggle and get over it. But, like, I genuinely enjoyed the human side perspective and learning the politics and the world building through that lens as well. A world where the characters can thrive is always necessary, and Tibet doesn't disappoint in any way. Tibet takes place in the continent of Dikathan, a land <laughs> <laughs> You're the king of Dickaton, bro? It's this continent called Dickaton? Forming with magic, mythical creatures, and political intrigue. Right. The world building is complex, rich, and utterly satisfying. Dickaton is divided <laughs> into several regions, each. I'm sorry, I'm just so immature. It's just Dickaton. <laughs> It's a dick of them, bro. <laughs> With its own distinct geography and culture, from the towering mountains of the Dwarven Kingdom to the lush forests of the Elves. Elven Realm. And you've probably seen many Izakai structured similarly. Yeah. But very rarely is it done Asia? to such a fascinating degree. I'd actually put the world building on the same level, if not better, than Mushoku Tensei. In Whoa, I, that's, a, that's a big thing to say, huh? Mushoku Tensei has, it is known for its world building. So this new show, Dickathan, is better, huh? The world building of Dickathan easily, easily surpasses all the different content with Shoku Dance. I don't know, I haven't read it, I haven't seen it. We'll, if an anime adaptation ever happens, we'll definitely check it out. In fact, its world is more reminiscent of a combination of Mushoku Tensei's world and Overlord's world. The diversity not only makes the world visually stunning, but also adds layers to the depth of the story. But what enhances oh, the world and even further is the power system. Now, if you're familiar with other manwas, or if you've watched solo leveling, yeah. you might have picked up on the fact that leveling. most manwa focus their power system around Stats. some type of system. While Japanese manga and anime incorporate something similar, normally from some type of game. But sometimes they approach it in a way like Mishoku Tensei, where it's purely based on the user's talent with magic or whatever power system it is. Yeah, there's no like quantifiable numbers to denote like how much stronger you've gotten, right? It's all just kind of, I don't know, you practice different things and you have some sort of, uh, what's the word? It's proficiency of those skills, right? In solo leveling, you're going to get like an actual numeric number that tells you exactly how much your strength, agility, dex, blah, blah, blah is. Yes. Well, Tibet does something similar, but also very different from both of these. Instead of a system, you earn all your power from the very second you're born on your own, okay. with the sole exception of monocores, which even then, results can be improved drastically if you work hard enough. Basically, you're given everything at birth, and then these monocores are something you can work on top of that after? There is no guide that tells you what to do or gives you skills to make your life easier. Okay. Everything you want needs to be worked for. Let's figure and it out. if you want to stand at the top, you have to be prepared to lose something, whether it's your family or your humanity itself. And there seems to be a lot of this sacrifice of humanity, right? As he loses like this Arthur mode and goes back to King Grey, who he was before after meeting this fucking dragon. But sounds like there's no guide, there's no teachers, mentors, there's no like system. It's just figure this shit out and get good. Prepared to lose something, whether it's your family or your humanity itself. Following that logic, Arthur became one of the most powerful in the series, reaching into the realms of the very gods themselves. Yeah, power scaling? Is he 11 dimensional? What is he at? Moon? Planet. Bigger planet. Bigger planet plus. Galaxy, universe, outerverse, 11D, 13D, 13E, plus plus, to the power of 69, is he? I don't know, man. You gotta give me some power scaling numbers. 
Whether it be the magic, the swordsmanship, knowledge, or bonds, none of them are granted just because of luck. And I love it so much because it makes not just Arthur- <laughs> Why did you say that while showing a solo leveling clip? As if Sung Jun Woo here, everything was due to luck. Which, honestly, it is. Right? Yes, there's a lot of effort and sacrifice to earn these powers. He did get lucky with episode 2 with the whole, you know, <laughs> the ritual of the fucking, uh, the quest that he completed. But <laughs> a little stray bullet here, I feel like. So whether it be the magic, the swordsmanship, knowledge, or bonds, none of them are granted just because of luck. And I love it so much because it makes not just Arthur's, but all the other characters' progression seem so much more satisfying. Nice. Speaking of other characters, I want to talk about some of the side characters. Mainly the relationship Arthur has with his parents. Okay. It's not that there are no other good side characters, in fact, it's quite the opposite. But the main reason is because of the dynamic that Arthur has between him and his family of adventurers. You've probably heard me say it multiple times, but the relationship that they share is something I've seen in Mushoku Tensei. The struggles that both of these characters go through when it comes with their family is something that I'm extremely Oh, that's a bad panel of the mom. What's going on? Uh-oh. Extremely interested in and one of the reasons why I've continued to watch for this long. Spoilers ahead. Honestly, this shit does not matter for spoilers to me. Because like when this anime gets adapted, if it even gets adapted, it's gonna be years down the road and I'll forget. I'm gonna forget this shit like tomorrow. So fuck it, let's go. For this part, I'm gonna have to spoil a bit, so Go ahead. beware for spoilers ahead. Arthur's parents have always loved him and treated him the way you'd expect any family to treat their son. No matter how strong he was, he always had a family that would treat him as a child and give him a home he could always come back to. Okay. But there was a point where- By the way, this is the third iteration of the rise of the- <clears throat> rising of the shield hero. <laughs> By the way, I, I love the soundtrack. I genuinely do. But this is the third iteration of him reusing the Rising of the Shield Hero soundtrack. Fuck it. Make it five. I, I want to listen to it. Just have it the entire video. Fuck it. Where Arthur had no choice and had to tell them about his previous life and oh. who he was before. And okay. Because Rudy never told Paul that. We never... Right? There's, there's, there's like nobody. Little... There's like couple people that actually knows that he's like an isekai character so arthur tells his parents right this is basically rudy telling zenith and paul yo i am a grown-ass man and you don't need to parent me no more and how long he's been hiding from them and naturally like you'd expect they were surprised the mom Not went crazy surprised, but completely shocked to the the mom is fucking losing it point where arthur's mother couldn't even focus and was on the verge of collapsing and while Arthur's dad was furious, he was more concerned about the fact that a grown man was sucking on his wife's tits. Yo! That's crazy that they're actually confronting that. Imagine if that should happen in Mushoku Tensei. Imagine Paul literally upside down, smiling as he realized that he protected his family. And Rudy goes, I'm an isekai character, by the way, motherfucker. Sucked on Zenith the titty. As a grown ass man. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> wow, they're actually going into something like this. Like, this is something most people would just skip, right? Like, the authors of these isekai stories, they would never even bother touching with topics like this. But that's insane. The mom has a mental collapse. And the dad is literally, you're a grown ass man. Just sucking on the teeth of my wife. I, t uh, oh my god. Oh my god, this is amazing. This is unironically fucking amazing. To be honest, can't blame him. Man has his priorities straight. I'm probably not explaining it as well as I want to, but believe me when- No, honestly, that's enough of a hook for me. Like, that alone has piqued my interest. Like, holy shit. An isekai where they're actually willing to go kind of confront the topics that a lot of people don't want to talk about because it's kind of weird and creepy and we just turn a blind eye to but like oh my god reading it you'll probably understand much better than me telling you this way but it was honestly one of the hardest parts of this series to read for me personally the way it seemed like everything was going it seemed like arthur was about to lose the only place he's ever been able to call home without his family the lines between arthur and gray would blur even further 
but so, so what is he gonna keep losing his family his friends his loved ones and then the identity of arthur that he isekai'd into goes away and he refers defers back to king gray surprisingly after they got some time to cool off they told arthur that no matter what he's still their son and he'll okay. always have a place to come home to oh, now okay. some of Okay, they made up, they made up, but like, wow, that's crazy, though. You guys may be wondering how on earth that makes these guys such good characters. Well, first off, the fact that they were able to look past basically a complete stranger being in the body of their son and possibly rubbing their real son from them. That's another thing, right? Because like, I don't know how the, the, the reincarnation system works here, but it's basically like King Grey's soul implanted onto the vessel of Arthur and did the original soul in there get kicked out and got replaced by King Gr I don't know how that shit really would work out, but that's interesting too. And completely accept Arthur as their son is not only amazing, but just goes to show how much they really care about him. No matter what happened before Arthur became their son, as soon as he was born, Arthur was a part of their family. That takes not just a certain amount of love, but also just goes to show Maturity. why Arthur looks up to them so much. Not just that, but Arthur's parents are actually one of the few side characters that managed to stay relevant, or at least more relevant than most of the other side characters. That's fucked up, bro. <laughs> you gonna talk about Arthur's parents then do this shit with Paul right now? ...in the story, since almost every action he takes has something to do with his family. So naturally, they just grab your heart way more than any other of the characters really do, since they get so much more page time. There are... Wow, isekai parents being so much focus. Yeah, Mushoku Tensei definitely does that a bit too, but like, it sounds like Arthur's mom and dad are very, it's like key supporting characters that's gonna take throughout the story. Other important and definitely good characters like Tessia. And the more the series goes on, the more complicated the relationship between Arthur and Tessia gets. El Flyfu? But personally, I find the relationship between Arthur and his family to be way more entertaining. So with all of that said, what does Tibet change? We've talked about everything. It changes everything. Everything the series is good at. I'm but gonna what could it change in the way that it. other Isekais are made? No, 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 no re well, stuff. first off, we done? they we done? take the depth of the connections that Arthur has with his family along with some other characters. Like I said previously, it's something that Michelle Kutense does really well, and in my opinion, that's one of the reasons why it's done so well so far. When an MC has much deeper connections with other characters, you're more invested in the story as a whole, and it just makes everything in the series seem more serious in terms of tension instead of having predictable plot lines. For sure. I'm well aware that every Izakai <laughs> can't be a <laughs> Re Zero or a Michelle Kutense, but it couldn't hurt to give characters a bit more depth. The second is having reasonable progression in terms of abilities. Tibet emphasizes the importance of training and gradual power progression. Arthur doesn't become- So, so far, the character depth, the development, all the different relationship that Arthur has is very deep. So it goes for very compelling storytelling. You actually care about them. The power system is also very unique in the sense that there's no quantifiable numbers like solo leveling or be all the different traditional webtoon styles, but it goes out on a different way. That's what makes it stand out, okay? Come invincible overnight. His journey involves rigorous training, strategic thinking, and real effort. When a character gets something almost handed to them, the power doesn't seem as. I love this solo leveling slander. Well, is it slander? This is the second example though. This is the second time he said something of some show just getting by with luck, just giving it a hand in, and every time it's a solo leveling clip. <laughs> and I like how when solo leveling was airing, every video essay, and then I'm not saying that he's a hypocrite. I don't know if he made solo leveling content, but everyone else was like, oh, Sung Jim Woo earned everything, bro. He suffered and it was always a sacrifice. And, and like, oh my God, the progression is so good. Cause it's like the scaling and the way that he earned it. And then we're like, yeah, and he just motherfucker got lucky. Rewarding or impressive as when they would reach certain heights on their own. And this doesn't just go for the MC, but also side characters. Yeah. And I know this one might seem a bit weird to add, but another thing I love about Tibet is its strong female characters. That's not weird at all. I think it's nice when you have a fucking female character that doesn't exist to be a damsel in distress or a literal fucking just 
a breeding so you know it's just like have do something why don't you say me for once god damn debate actually has some well-developed female characters who play crucial roles in the story they're not just love interests or sidekicks they have their own arcs strengths and significance basically not a static character that inserts as big boo waifu for you to fucking self insert yourself as shin wolford here so that you can just fucking imagine <laughs> Hey, wise man made it onto the fucking video, but it's actually nice. Like, again, the common example I give is like dangerous in my heart, right? The girl. Thank you, Pog, for the tier one sub. Thank you so much. But the dangerous in my heart example is how the main girl is also unique and dynamic and has their own shit going on. It's not just this perfect girl from the beginning that just exists, you know? Over a period of time, you just get sick of the whole damsel in distress character. Yes, it's so fucking annoying when these annoying bitches have no writing and they're just literally just prisoners. Or just like, just does, does nothing. Like, give me something else. Like, show me a big badass girl that'll fucking save me for once. Or the female supporting characters being only support. Having a female character that can stand as equals to the MC is something I'd love to see in more Isekais. I'm not saying I want to have every female character just as strong as the MC, but it would be really nice if they could be more significant to the plot. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. I've wanted to make this video for a long time, so I hope I explained everything well. But if I didn't, feel free to ask any questions. No, no, no. I think the video was really well done. I, I, it was the intro part that I was a bit f confused about with like Gray and Arthur because obviously I don't know anything about the show. I was like, whoa, Gray, Arthur, reincarnation. But sounds like a really good isekai where you used to be a king, then you got reincarnated as a boy in a different place, I guess. And there's this deep power progression that is not simply just luck or given to you. You have to earn that shit. There's no like manuals or guides. And then there's this like character depth and the relationship that he has. And the central focal point of this relationship seems to be around it with his family and his mom and dad and this confrontation scene, bro. Telling them that you're an isekai character and the mom breaking down and the dad, like, this is some shit that I never thought would ever be explored in an isekai. I never thought it would be, but like, that's crazy. I am super interested in this one, but... The curse of being a fucking anime reactor is I can no longer read any webtoons, any manga, or anything that has yet to come out in preparation for a goddamn blind reaction. But hey, please check out Velcro's channel. Go like his videos. Sub to the channel if you like them. And I'll see you all in the next one.